Hi. That's my forehead. <laughs> and all his That's my son. <laughs> okay, back it up, Munchkin. And now I'm oh, Ileana's gonna do it too? I'm a Munchkin. So Sam's daughter is completely normal. And now I'm her daughter. <laughs> Bunch of weirdos in this house, I'm telling you. But it's time for chapter two, chapter dose of the Osma of Oz. So we are going to read another chapter. It's terribly exciting. Um, in chapter one, Dorothy was sailing with her uncle to go to Australia and see his cousins. And right in the middle of them sailing to Australia... There was a huge storm, and they were all told to go below decks, but Uncle Henry disappeared. She went to go look for him, and then her, she got blown away in the storm. Um, she was holding on to a chicken coop, and the chicken coop landed in the water, and she fell asleep. Because Dorothy can sleep through anything. She slept through a cyclone that carried her to Oz once, remember? It was weird. So, here we are in Chapter 2. And she's still in the chicken coop, floating around, sleeping. And chapter two is called The Yellow Hen. Let's read. A strange noise awoke Dorothy, who opened her eyes to find that day had dawned and the sun was shining brightly in a clear sky. She had been dreaming that she was back in Kansas again and playing in the old barnyard with the calves and pigs and chickens all around her. And at first... She, as she rubbed the sleep from her eyes, she really imagined she was there. Ah, here again was the strange noise that awakened her. Surely it was a hen cackling. But her wide open eyes first saw through the slats of the coop the blue waves of the ocean, now calm and placid. And her thoughts flew back to the past night, so full of danger and discomfort. Also, she began to remember that she was a waif on the storm, adrift upon a treacherous and unknown sea. Good, 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 good. What's that? cried Dorothy, starting to her feet. What? I've just laid an egg, that's all, replied a small but sharp and distinct voice. And looking around her, the little girl discovered a yellow hen squatting in the opposite corner of the coop. One moment, I have to deal with munchkins. You can get along, or you can go to bed and stop listening. I don't care which, but we're not going to sit there and fight while I'm reading. Understood? Thank you. Dear me, she exclaimed in surprise. Have you been here all night, too? Of course, answered the hen, fluttering her wings and yawning. When the coop blew away from the ship, I clung fast to this corner with claws and beak, for I knew if I fell into the water, I'd surely be drowned. Indeed, I nearly drowned as it was, all that water washing over me. I never was so wet before in all my life. Yes, agreed Dorothy. It was pretty wet for a time, I know. But do you feel more comfortable now? Not very. The sun has helped to dry my feathers, as it has your dress. And I feel better since I laid my morning egg. But what's to become of us? I should like to know a float on this big pond. I'd like to know that too, said Dorothy. But tell me, how does it own, how does it happen that you're able to talk? I thought hens could only cluck and cackle. Why, as for that, answered the yellow hen thoughtfully, I've clucked and cackled my whole life. Never spoken a word before this morning. I'm sorry, I have to deal with munchkins once again. Arthur, it's your bedtime. Good night. Take your blanket. Go to bed. Nope, I don't know what you're doing. Go to your room. Go to bed. If you're going to continue fighting... Then you're done. I told you that already. Good night. I'll see you tomorrow. I warned them once. The kids know. If I warn them, I will follow through. As for that, answered the yellow hen thoughtfully, I've clucked and cackled all my life, never spoken a word for this morning that I can remember. But when you asked me a question a minute ago, it seemed the most natural thing in the world to answer you. So I spoke, and I seem to keep on speaking just as you and other humans do. Strange, isn't it? Very, replied Dorothy. If we were in the land of Oz, I wouldn't think it so queer. Many of the animals can talk in that fairy country. But out here in the ocean must be a good long way from Oz. 
How's my grammar? asked the yellow hen anxiously. Do I speak properly, in your judgment? Yes, you do very well for a beginner. Glad to know it, continued the yellow hen in a confidential tone. Because if one is going to talk, it's best to talk correctly. Red Roosters often said that my cluck and my cackle were quite perfect. Now it's comfort to know I'm talking properly. Beginning to get hungry, remarked Dorothy. It's breakfast, but there's no breakfast. You may have my egg, said the yellow hen. I don't care for it, you know. Don't you want to hatch it? asked the little girl in surprise. No, indeed I never care to hatch eggs unless I have a nice snug nest. Some quiet place with a baker's dozen eggs under me. at thirteen, you know. And it's a lucky number for hens, so you may as well eat this egg. Oh, I couldn't possibly eat it unless it was cooked, exclaimed Dorothy. But I'm much obliged for your kindness just the same. Don't mention it, answered the hen calmly, and began pruning her feathers. For a moment, Dorothy stood looking out over the wide sea. She was still thinking of the egg, though, so presently she asked... Why do you lay eggs when you don't expect to hatch them? Habit. Habit I have, replied the yellow hen. It's always been my pride to lay a fresh egg every morning, except when I'm molting. I never feel like having my morning cackle till the egg is properly laid. Without a chance to cackle, I would not be happy. Mm -hmm. It's strange, said the girl reflectively, but as I'm not a hen, I can't be expected to understand that. Certainly not. Then Dorothy fell silent again. The yellow hen was some company and a bit of comfort, too, but it was dreadfully lonely out on the big ocean nevertheless. After a time, the hen flew up and perched upon the topmost slat of the coop, which was a little above Dorothy's head when she was sitting upon the bottom, as she'd been doing for some moments past. Why, we're not far from land, exclaimed the hen. Where, where is it? cried Dorothy, jumping up in great excitement. Over there a little way answered the hen, nodding her head in a certain direction. We seem to be drifting toward it, so that before noon we ought to find ourselves upon dry land again. I shall like that, said Dorothy with a little sigh, for her feet and legs were still wetted now and then by the sea water that came through the open slats. So shall I, answered her companion. There's nothing in the world so miserable as a wet hen. The land, which they seemed to be rapidly approaching since it grew more distinct every minute, was quite beautiful as viewed by the little girl in the floating hen coop. Next to the water was a broad beach of white sand and gravel, and farther back were several rocky hills, while beyond these appeared a strip of green trees that marked the edge of a forest. There were no houses to be seen, nor any sign of people who might inhabit this unknown land. I, sh I hope we shall find something to eat, said Dorothy, looking eagerly at the pretty beach toward which they drifted. It's long past breakfast time now. I'm hungry myself, declared the yellow hen. Why don't you just eat the egg, asked the child. You don't need to have your foot co food cooked as I do. Do you take me for a cannibal, cried the hen indignantly. I do not know what I have said or done that leads you to insult me. I beg your pardon, I'm sure, Mrs. Miss, by the way, may, may I inquire your name, ma'am? Name's Bill, said the yellow hen, somewhat gruffly. Bill? Why, that's a boy's name. What difference does it make? You're a lady hen, aren't you? Of course. When I was first hatched out, no one could tell whether I was going to be a hen or a rooster. So a little boy at the farm where I was born called me Bill. He made a pet of me because I was the only yellow chicken in the whole brood. When I grew up and he found out I didn't crow and fight as all the other roosters did, he didn't think change my name. And every creature in the barnyard, as well as all the people in the house, knew me as Bill. So Bill I've always been called, and Bill is my name. But it's all wrong, you know, declared Dorothy earnestly. And if you don't mind, I'll call you Billina. Putting the Eena on the, putting the Eena on the end makes it a girl's name, you see. Oh, I don't mind it in the least, returned the yellow hen. Doesn't matter at all what you call me, as long as I know what name means me. Very well, Billina. My name is Dorothy Gale. Just Dorothy to my friends and Miss Gale to strangers. You may call me Dorothy if you like. We're getting very near the shore. Do you suppose it's too deep for me to wade the rest of the way? Wait a few minutes longer. Sunshine is warm and pleasant. We're in no hurry. But my feet are all wet and soggy, said the girl. My dress is dry enough, but I won't feel real comfortable till I get my feet dried. 
She waited, however, as the hen had advised, and before long the big wooden coop grated gently on the sandy beach and the dangerous voyage was over. It did not take the castaways long to reach the shore, you may be sure. The yellow hen flew to the sands at once, but Dorothy had to climb over the high slats. Still, for a country girl, that was not much of a feat. And as soon as she was safe ashore, Dorothy drew off her wet shoes and stockings, spread them upon the sun-warmed beach to dry. Then she sat down and watched Bellina, who was pick-pecking away with her sharp bill in the sand and gravel, which she snatched and turned over with her strong claws. "'What are you doing?' asked Dorothy. "'Getting my breakfast, of course,' murmured the hen, busily pecking away. Well, "'What'd you find?' inquired the girl, curiously. "'Oh, some fat red ants, and some sand bugs, and once in a while a tiny crab. They're very sweet and nice, I assure you.' "'How dreadful!' exclaimed Dorothy in a shocked voice. "'What's dreadful?' asked the hen, lifting her head to gaze with one bright eye at her companion. "'Why, eating live things and horrid bugs and crawly ants.' You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Goodness me, returned the hen in a puzzled tone. How queer you are, Dorothy. Live things are much fresher and more wholesome than dead ones. You humans eat all sort of dead creatures. We don't, said Dorothy. Do indeed, answered Bellina. Eat lambs and sheep and cows and pigs and even chickens. But, but we cook them, said Dorothy triumphantly. What difference does that make? Good deal, said the girl in a graver tone. I can't just explain the difference, but it's there. And anyhow, we never eat such dreadful things as bugs. But you eat chickens. Chickens eat bugs, retorted the yellow hen with an odd cackle. So you're just as bad as chickens now. This made Dorothy thoughtful. What Belina said was true enough, and it almost took away her appetite for breakfast. As for the yellow hen, she continued to peck away at the sand busily, and seemed quite contented with her bill of fare. Finally, down near the water's edge, Bellina stuck her bill deep into the sand and then drew back and shivered. She cried, I struck metal that time, and it nearly broke my beak. It probably was rock, said Dorothy, carelessly. Nonsense! I know a rock from metal, said the hen. There's a different feel to it. There couldn't be metal on this wild, deserted seashore, persisted the girl. Where's the place? I'll dig it up and prove you I'm right. Billina showed her the place where she had stubbed her bill, as she expressed it. And Dorothy dug away in the sand until she felt something hard. Then, thrusting in her hand, she pulled the thing out and discovered it to be a large-sized golden key. Rather old, but still bright and of perfect shape. What did I tell you? cried the hen with a cackle of triumph. Can I tell metal when I bump into it or is a thing of rock? It's metal, sure enough, answered the child, gazing thoughtfully at the curious thing she had found. I think it's pure gold, and it must have lain hidden in the sand for a long time. How do you suppose it came there, Belina? What do you suppose this mysterious key unlocks? I can't say, replied the hen. You ought to know more about locks and keys than I do. Dorothy glanced around. There was no sign of any house in that part of the country, so, and she reasoned that every key must fit a lock, and every lock must have a purpose. Perhaps the key had been lost by somebody who lived far away, but had wandered on this very shore. Musing on these things, the girl put the key in the pocket of her dress, and then slowly drew on her shoes and stockings, which the sun had fully dried. "'I believe, Blina, she said. "'I'll have a look around see if I can find some breakfast.' And that ends Chapter 2 of Ozma of Oz. Tomorrow night's chapter is called Letters in the Sand, Chapter 3 of Ozma of Oz, which we will be reading at 8 o'clock tomorrow night, July 2nd. That's my daughter's 13th birthday. That's insane. I'm too young to have a 13-year-old daughter. I don't know what to do. By the way, it's the bigger kid, not me. Yeah, not her. The older one. The older one. The one that, the munchkin that's missing tonight. Not the munchkin that I sent to bed or the one that's still here. But... Tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, birthday or no, I will be reading live on Facebook. I'll see you then. Good night, everyone.